For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to provide a very brief recap for week seven. As we have uh, concluded our literature review at this point, we need to be focusing primarily now on our research questions. Do make sure that the research questions align with the section headings that you've included in your literature review, as well as the thesis statement. We want to make sure that whatever we're collecting, all the different data sources that we're going to be considering to triangulate the information aligns with the literature review. So I've included a few key links that I think are that might be helpful for you to consider during this week. So here we have uh, some tips on creating a questionnaire and uh, this might be one of the first things that you apply when you're trying to officially choose the participants. This in week six we talked about in our tutoring session the importance of either applying some kind of questionnaire an interview, or maybe a focus group in order to help you answer the question, why did you choose your participants? We want to have a good reason for including or choosing the participants, primarily, primarily the teachers. And in order to get enough information to answer that question, we need to apply some kind of questionnaire or interview. So I've included a couple of links here, one for creating a questionnaire, another for preparing for a semi-structured interview. We're going to need an interview guide if you want to do any kind of interview or focus group. And here are some ideas to consider whenever you're uh, putting together this instrument. Same way with the questionnaire. If you can apply an online questionnaire, this might make the most sense. If you're able to reach out to potential teachers, contact them, and ask them to go online to complete the, the questionnaire. Realize that sometimes this can be time-consuming. If they're not quick to respond, it might require that you go face-to-face, -face, either individually or as a group, to encourage them or to introduce yourself and uh, help them go online and complete the questionnaire. Whatever works, but make sure that they are answering in a timely fashion so that you're getting your information in a timely fashion. We want to try to have information by the end of week six or maybe the middle of week seven so that you have chosen your participants and we can, we can continue on with the, the next step. Now, the next step after you have officially chosen your participants based on applying either a questionnaire or an interview or a focus group. I would only choose one of those. Then we need to consider all the additional types of data sources that you're likely to, to include in order to triangulate the information for your qualitative research. Those include interviews, additional interviews perhaps, a focus group, classroom observations, some kind of document or content analysis or this might include anything from student homework or activities or products that the students are creating themselves. This might include anything related to what the teacher uses or prepares himself or herself. So, for example, if they are uh, sharing or if they have a, a lesson plan, they have a syllabus that they can provide you, that might be um, good examples of documents or records that you're using to complement the, the other sources of information to help answer your research questions. Audio or video is also a data source. Whether you create the audio or video yourself as the researcher, make sure that all interviews, focus groups, classroom observations are recorded. Videos are typically the best, especially for classroom observation, but uh, make sure that everything that you collect in re as it relates to interviews, focus groups, and classroom observations that you do have recordings. Otherwise, it's not permissible. We need to have uh, a recording so you're later able to go in and capture direct quotes that later you can include in your results section. So these are just general data sources, data types that you're going to be considering. And the idea, the idea or the objective here after you've officially chosen your participants is then find or determine what's the next step. Which of these 
are going to make the most sense to continue collecting the data that you need for answering your research questions. Each of you is likely to take a different journey in terms of making choices on the different data sources because it very much depends on the objective of your study, the research questions, of course, also just the availability or logistics of the situation in terms of what you're able to, uh, to gather. So there are a lot of variables and this is, um, these are things we can talk about each week during our tutoring session or even before your next tutoring session if it's not clear what the next step is. But in most of your cases, once you have officially chosen your participants, you're likely to either think or decide on doing a, an interview or maybe it makes more sense to go right into a, a classroom observation with the idea being that you observe a few classes and you're generating some questions that you might include later in an interview. Throughout the process of collecting your data, you're likely to include several interviews, several classroom observations, and any kind of documents or records or audio or video that complement or support whatever you're observing, whatever you're discussing in your interviews, of course, all relevant to the research questions. Remember that your task is simply to answer descriptively your research questions. So make sure that you stay on topic and you're not collecting a lot of information that's not, not relevant. And it's likely that when you get into a classroom uh, observation that there's going to be some parts of that class that are going to be less relevant than others in terms of answering those research questions. So it's a matter of getting enough in, uh, observations in to, uh, to be able to capture those, those moments to help you. So this is going to be our focus for week seven, basically beginning to design instruments and begin thinking about different types of data sources that we're going to be including and starting that process in week seven so that each week we continue this idea of designing, implementing or collecting the data and analyzing a little bit each week so that we're more informed and can make better decisions as to what comes next. This is going to be something that I ask that you include in detail in each of your weekly reflections during these next six weeks is to include all of those processes, what you did each week in terms of what did you design, what did you create in terms of instruments, what did you actually collect in that particular week, and again, what kind of analysis did you do and what kind of decisions did you reach based on that analysis to help you know what you plan on doing next. So I hope this helps. Make sure you're reaching out to me if you do have any questions this week. And uh, we'll see everybody in your next tutoring session.